New images of 3i Atlas just dropped, and they're being compared directly to spacecraft data and NASA's own explanations. Today isn't about speculation. It's about what the images show, what the geometry explains, and what NASA actually said when asked directly. Let's start with the new image. This was captured during 3i Atlas's closest approach to Earth, and it immediately shows why today's update matters. What you're looking at here isn't just a brighter frame or heavier processing. It's structure, a compact central core, a clearly defined primary tail, and a second fainter tail extending in a different direction, all resolved cleanly against the deep background of stars and distant galaxies. This isn't a one-off capture. It lines up with what multiple observers have been recording from different locations with different instruments over different nights. And that consistency is the key theme of this update. Because when independent data keeps reproducing the same geometry, the question stops being, is this real? And becomes, what exactly are we seeing? Let's break that down using today's images and the latest official responses. Now compare that to this frame. This is 3i Atlas captured from the ground under real sky conditions with modest equipment, no heavy enhancement no artistic stretching. And notice what isn't obvious. There's no dramatic tail flare, no sharp jet blasting outward, no sudden structural change. What we're seeing here is a compact central glow with a faint, diffuse envelope. Exactly what you'd expect when the object is already moving away from optimal geometry and brightness. The star trails tell you something important, too. This exposure is long enough that background stars smear, but the object itself stays tight. That tells us the signal is real, stable, and faint. Not an artifact, not motion blur, and not processing noise. This is the kind of image that matters, because it shows what 3i Atlas looks like when you don't push the data. No exaggeration, just physics. Now look closely at this frame. At first glance, it almost looks underwhelming, a faint streak, barely standing out from the background stars. But that's exactly why this image matters. What you're seeing here is not a sudden flare or an explosive outburst. It's a directional structure, elongated, coherent, and consistent with the object's motion and illumination geometry. The brightness drops off smoothly. There's no fragmentation, no secondary core, no chaotic spray of material. Instead, the emission stays aligned, even as the signal weakens. That tells us something important. If this were a transient artifact, aggressive processing, or noise, the structure would smear, break apart, or rotate unpredictably between frames. But it doesn't. Across multiple nights, different observers, different optics, and different processing pipelines, the same orientation keeps showing up. Faint, but stable. This is exactly what you expect from dust responding to solar radiation pressure and viewing geometry after perihelion, not from an impulsive event or an internal disruption. In other words, the object isn't doing something new here. It's continuing the same physical process, just at lower signal. This is where things finally snap into focus. These panels come from a dedicated analysis, not casual imaging. Different dates, Different heliocentric distances, same object, viewed from different angles. What looks like a sunward facing tail here isn't a new jet, thrust, or anomalous emission. It's geometry. The dust tail hasn't flipped direction. We're seeing it projected forward along our line of sight after perihelion. As 3i Atlas moved past the Sun, the viewing angle between Earth, the dust sheet, and the object changed. That causes older dust, already released earlier, to stack visually in front of the nucleus. When that happens, the tail can appear to point toward the sun, even though every dust grain is still moving away from it. The contour lines here trace brightness gradients. They're smooth, they're continuous, and most importantly, they align with the predicted dust plane, not with any active source on the nucleus. Look at both epochs. The apparent structure shifts exactly as the phase angle and distance change, not randomly, not impulsively. 
That rules out a new jet turning on, an internal energy source, any sudden change in propulsion or behavior. What remains is the simplest explanation, and the one that matches the data. A normal dust tail, seen from an unusual but temporary angle. This is why raw images, processed images, and professional analyses all need to be read together. A single frame can look strange. A sequence, anchored in geometry, tells the real story. Next image, we'll tie this directly to the NASA AMA answers and explain why amateurs and space telescopes are seeing different things without contradicting each other. This question came up directly in NASA's own AMA. Why do some amateur astronomers appear to be getting clearer images of 3i Atlas than NASA? And the answer matters. NASA's response is simple, and it's technical, not evasive. Most of the spacecraft that captured 3i Atlas were never designed to image comets at all. They're heliophysics missions, sun-watching instruments, built to study the solar atmosphere and near-sun space, not faint extended dust structures. So when those instruments picked up 3i Atlas near perihelion, it wasn't because they were optimized for it. It was luck and timing. From Earth, no backyard telescope could observe the object at perihelion. It was too close to the sun in the sky. Only space-based instruments, already staring at the sun, could see it at all during that window. That's why NASA's images look different. They're not meant to be pretty. They're meant to catch particles, fields, and emissions in harsh solar conditions. Amateur images, taken later, benefit from dark skies, long integrations, telescopes optimized for visible light, and weeks of careful processing. They're doing different jobs. So this isn't amateurs outperforming NASA. It's two completely different tools, built for different purposes, observing the same object at different times. And once you understand that, the apparent contradiction disappears. Next, we'll look at NASA's second answer, the one everyone keeps circling back to. The question about whether 3i Atlas could be artificial. NASA was directly asked whether 3i Atlas could be an alien craft. Their answer is unambiguous. All available evidence points to 3i Atlas being a natural object, behaving like comets in our own solar system. The differences we're seeing don't suggest technology. They suggest origin. This object formed around another star, in a different environment, with different chemistry. That alone can explain why it looks unfamiliar. Unusual doesn't mean artificial. Interstellar doesn't mean engineered. So far, every measurable feature, brightness, dust behavior, and tail structure, fits natural physics once geometry and composition are accounted for. The real question isn't whether it's artificial, it's what it can teach us about how other star systems form. So here's the question. If 3i Atlas looks strange but follows natural physics, how many mysteries in space are really just unfamiliar environments? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If this breakdown helped, hit like. And if you want more clear, evidence-based space analysis without the hype, subscribe. Also, check out my new video, Why Beetlejuice is Already in Its Final Stage.